Hello, this is going to be a quick little tutorial for how to navigate a file in Onshape for any builders who are following a CAD. The first thing to know about a file in Onshape is that, uh, is that files in this program are separated into assemblies and sub-assemblies. So for example, in this file here, you can see that I have assembly, th this assembly here three, labeled 360 RPM 1x3x1, 17.5 inch chassis brace, and stacked motor 360 on these tabs here. There are also folders that contain even more assemblies. Each assembly can also contain sub-assemblies. So for example, uh, this drivetrain that you see here consists of two sub-assemblies, the left and right drivetrain. And, uh, and, and if you click on these arrows here, you can see that all the sub-assemblies in part that make up each, uh, that make up each assembly. Each assembly in Onshape will have something called a BOM table or a Bill of Materials table and you can access it by clicking this button on the right here. A BOM table gives you a quanti quantities of every single item that you're going to need to build. You can adjust the mod and modify the table by resizing certain columns by dragging this little tab here. You can add columns by clicking this button and click and choosing the column that you want. So for example, I can click on description and get this column here. You can resize the whole tab like this, by clicking on the edge here. Usually Onshape will only include quantity, part number, and description, which is a link to uh, to that parts, uh, which is a link to where you can buy that part on vex.com or the vex website. It also includes part numbers, which are just the SKU numbers for each of these parts. Although it doesn't include the name, so I recommend adding the name for ease of use. You can also remove columns or move them to the left by right clicking the top of each column and either remo move left, move right, or just removing the each column. I prefer to only have quantities and names of each items because this makes more sense to me. To navigate within each assembly in, uh, in Onshape, you can either pan ro or rotate, which are basically just the two basic movements for any CAD program. If you have a mouse, you can right click to rotate around and you can use the scroll click to pan. You could also use this cube here by clicking on each of the faces to align the camera to each side of the assembly. You can also use these arrows here to rotate around the model. If you're on a laptop or otherwise don't have a mouse and would rather not use a trackpad to navigate around here, you can also use your keyboard to navigate. Uh, all the relevant keybinds can be found in the help menus, keyboard shortcuts. For our purposes, we'll be mostly using the things in the 3D view column. So, uh, but the two that I will mention because they're the most useful in my opinion is using the arrows to rotate, holding down shift and using the arrow keys to do more precise rotations and holding down control, shift, and then using the arrow keys to pan around. To zoom in or out, simply use the scroll wheel. If you want to measure a part in an assembly, you can use the show measure details tool. Simply click on this little icon here and the measure window will show up. You can adjust units for uh, length and angle, but, I'd, but I recommend just keeping it at inch because most because VEX does all of its measurements in inches. To measure, simply click two phases that you want to measure. For example, if I wanted to measure, let's say, uh, the length of this C channel over here, I would click on this one edge of the C channel and then go around and then click the other edge to figure out which axis you should be looking at because of all it shows you all these numbers. Simply hover over each number until you see the dotted line that shows up on the axis that you want to measure. So from here I know that this C channel is 15 inches long. If you want to get a closer look at each component in, uh, in, in an assembly, there are a few ways you can do this. To start, if you want more information about a certain part, you can click on it and it will highlight its place in the subassembly in the subassembly tree. So for example, here now I can see that this is a V5 smart motor. Additionally, if I for example go onto this C channel here, let me just find it's in right drive train drive rail, inside drive train, upper motor. For example, when I hover over this, I can see the part name as well as any other relevant information about that part that I could need to know. 
Additionally, you can hide assembly, you can hide sub assemblies or parts to see things easier. You can also isolate parts by right clicking them and clicking isolate, and this will make and this will make all the other parts around it trans translucent, which can help you get a better look at how things are built on the inside. You can use the slider here to also include some more parts, but it is a bit strange. To unisolate, just click the X and things will go back to normal. Additionally, you can also use section views to get very in-depth views of how parts are fitted together. For example, if I right click this face here and select section view, it will essentially cut the entire build in half on this face here and let me see deep inside any parts that I might need to look at. So for example, by doing this, it has cut open a large chunk of the chunk of the drivetrain and now I can see how all the gears, spacers, and nuts are fitted together within this drivetrain. Like with isolating, to stop, just hit the X and things will go back to normal. Finally, if you would like to go into each assembly to get closer looks at parts, simply right click the part that you would like to go into. For example, if I right click on this C channel here, it will give me the option to switch to left drivetrain. It will, this name will be different depending on what assembly you're going into. So click on that. And now I am inside the left drivetrain assembly. And if I want to get an even closer look, I can, for example, right click on say the inner drive, the, the drive rail, and I can switch all the way into here and take a good look at whatever I need to look at. To go back to the original assembly, you can just click to all tabs to go all the way out and then and then find the assembly that you were working on earlier. That'll be all for now and I hope that this video was helpful.